Without freedom of speech, the economy will shrivel. Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. Freedom of speech, explicitly guaranteed in the First Amendment of the Constitution, is under assault from numerous universities, employers, cultural institutions, websites, and, ironically and astonishingly, in much of the media itself. Media types who should know better are comparing speech control to gun control. Too much free speech is dangerous, they aver, a luxury we can no longer afford. What's taking place is the muffling or outright suppression of speech that certain groups or individuals find objectionable or simply disagree with. The consequences of nonconformity are real, including potential loss of one's job and public ostracism and shaming. This is poison for democracy and for future economic prosperity. After all, who determines what views are acceptable? Today, Democrats are in charge and many are pushing for restrictions on free expression. But the Republicans will eventually come back to power. Do these far-left Democrats want a situation where the far right can determine what opinions and ideas are acceptable and punish those who don't conform to them? What isn't always so well appreciated is that freedom of expression goes hand in hand with economic progress. A society that restricts speech will restrict freedom, essential to the creativity and experimentation that lead to inventions and innovations that raise humanity's standard of living. Here's just one example among countless others. For decades, it was an iron rule of medicine that ulcers were caused by stress, spicy foods, and excessive acid. Expensive drugs were made on that basis, as were awful diets. Then in the early 1980s, a pair of Australian physicians challenged that belief and concluded that peptic ulcers could be cured with antibiotics. An outraged medical establishment ridiculed and dismissed these findings. This was the kind of misinformation today's would-be censors would have suppressed. In 2005, the two men were awarded the Nobel Prize for Medicine. In a free society, individuals from the most unlikely backgrounds can invent, innovate, and constantly improve products and services and go up against powerful and established interests. It was not aristocrats, potent politicians, or university graduates who launched the Industrial Revolution. It was most often tinkers and mechanics who fueled the discoveries that improved the human condition, what noted historian Deidre McCloskey calls the Great Enrichment. For centuries, the average individual income stayed stuck at $3 a day. That's adjusted for inflation. In the U.S. today, it is well over $150. Freedom of expression is essential for our well-being. I'm Steve Forbes. Thank you for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. I look forward to being with you soon again. Oh,